Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back. I'm talking to two lovely ladies. They're both dietitians practicing at Garden City Clinic in Mayfair. Faiza Lahir and Amina Dindar. They're talking about this amazing collaboration, not only between the two of them, but a whole host of other dietitians all around the country. And they've come up with this book, Your Guide to a Healthy Ramadan, a book which is available immediately. And it was in preparation for the Mubarak month of Ramadan. Amina, you've told me something pretty fascinating and you've talked about Sunnah foods, which you mention on every page or rather with every recipe in uh, the book. Please tell us more about it. You know, um, I think it's so important when we uh, talk about food and eating to look at the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's so much of benefit in um, doing the Sunnah action. So there's so much of Sunnah involved with the way we eat and the amounts we eat and all of that. But I think it's so also so important to mention and to talk about the Sunnah foods. There are so much, so many Sunnah foods that we use on a daily basis in our cooking, in our meal preparations. And you know, just simply having that intention when we, um, either as mothers or, um, or as uh, pre like mothers preparing for our families or as sisters, or whatever it is. I think just having that intention that, you know what, I'm adding a sunnah food to my meal. There's so much more blessings and barakah in our meals. And um, if you think about it, the sunnah foods are such simple things. Simple things like bread, you know, is a sunnah food. Vinegar, we use vinegar all the time in our meals. When we're marinating our chickens, we like to add a bit of vinegar in there. But, and simply that one teaspoon of vinegar is actually a sunnah. So, um, and, and that's what we try to create awareness ar around with the recipes, especially for Ramadan. When you are using a Sunnah food in your, in your recipe, in your meal, just that simple intention, um, there's so much of reward in that. Inshallah. And being mindful about it, you yes. know, and, and when you're mindful with something like that, Alhamdulillah, what comes to mind, our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, us as Muslims, the Mubarak month of Ramadan, what we are doing, and as you've said, intentional mm -hmm. mindfulness yes. and being, you know, with the intention of, oh Allah, I am preparing this meal for my family, mm -hmm. bless this meal with uh, rizik and barakah, and just all of those beautiful thoughts of gratitude just uplifts your soul and your spirit. Faiza, um, and that's a beautiful note. I, I really am so pleased that you've included it and shared it with us on air right here. Um, you have some thoughts regarding the people you've involved here, colleagues of yours from all over the country. There's also, before we get to that in traditional foods, how it would be appealing right across the board. You have a space for notes, blank notes. What's that all about? So the notes are just for people to note down if they made a little um, change to the recipe, they can note that down. So if you add an extra spice or cardamom here and there, a little bit of extra honey or vinegar or something, you can always write it down. Um, and then if you are a diabetic or you have a health condition and you consultant consulted a dietitian and she made some changes to your recipes, then you could we would note that down in the notes section as well. But in some of the recipes, we've taken that space to show you uh, different ways in which you can use that recipe. So if it's a chicken a recipe with chicken breast, we could tell you, you know, use this recipe as a filling or use it as a sandwich or use it in a wrap. So we sort of just make the recipes very versatile, simple recipes, but just versatile and healthy at the same time. So giving amazing tips for people like myself that's not, uh, you know, too au fait in the kitchen. That would help me along, wouldn't it? It would, it <laughs> would. And, and um, you know, um, to make, we don't want to make things very uh, complicated. We wanted to make it simple recipes that you could use over and over. If you have leftovers, what could you do with those leftovers? Wow. Because we don't like throwing food away at the end of the day. Um, and uh, where could you use a salad? How would you use the salad in a different way? Perhaps use it for Eid or after Ramadan, again, uh, recycle the recipe in a different way. So that's what it's all about, you know, taking the foods that we usually have, uh, making you more mindful about where you're using them, how you're using those ingredients. And then also, um, you know, they're simple, they're simple recipes. Okay, all of them have been tried and tested. All are tried and tested because we're so many people who put our recipes together that um, we've included 
only tried and tested recipes in the in the recipe book. Okay, your favorite recipe and what did you con which recipes have you contributed to the book? Um, so there are quite a few, um, and I think I, uh, I think with all of us, we try to make recipes that um, you know resonate with our home. So things Absolutely. that I love to make in my home, um, and one of the things that we all love is dal and rice. You know, okay. Friday lunch is always dal and rice. So one of the recipes that I've contributed was dal and rice for Friday. Um, there are some homes that love to have rice still on a Friday, even of in course. Ramadan. So, um, you know, I've used my um, grandmother's traditional dal and rice recipe and I've adjusted it by adding lots of peppers, lots of vegetables to my, um, to my recipe. Um, reduced obviously all the, the the oils and the ghee that she's um, she always used um, and I've adjusted that recipe to suit a more healthier well-balanced uh, meal so that's one of the recipes that I contributed and I think um, if you look through the like the meal plans it's all home recipes that, um, you know, it's nothing fancy, nothing extravagant. You don't need to go to a health store to buy all these fancy things. It's home things that... Um, Stuff you have on the shelves. All the time, yes. But you've adapted, uh, adapted it so that the calorie count comes down and it's a healthier option for all of us. Yes, and also it's, it's recipes that um, the kids can eat, mm. older people can eat. Um, you can use them as lunch box ideas after Ramadan or in the start of the year. Um, so they're very versatile. What if you, what, what recipes did you come up with? And the other interesting um, thing that I've also picked up when we chatted off air was the fact that you've included puddings or desserts. And that for me was quite wow. Tell us more about that. There are those days when we all want something sweet to end the day. And this shouldn't be something that we should be frowned upon. You know, we always thought, we always meant, uh, you know, taught to think that you can't have a rest, uh, can't have a dessert because you're going to put on weight. But what we've done is we've included all our favorite um, recipes, faludas, milkshakes, iced teas, um, kheer, kheer and kheer pudding. Um, and we've adapted them so the sugar is a little less. Maybe we've used low-fat milk um, just so that it can fit in a diet without having to be um, super restrictive and, you know, I can't eat this, I can't eat that. So and just, still delicious. And still delicious, And still yes. delicious. Um, there's this myth about uh, overusage or using too much of meat in your diet. Um, someone I know suggested that um, if he cuts out meat, it's going to help him on his way uh, to losing some weight. Is that a fact? Is that a myth? How do we, how do we work around too much or having meat almost every second or every day of the week? So there's a lot of research leaning more towards a plant-based diet. So wherever you can include more uh, plant-based proteins, beans, lentils, um, chickpeas, tofu, um, paneer if you like, um, to replace where you would traditionally have eaten meat. The, the, um, the one big thing for us, especially in our community, is we have a very high in incidence of obesity, diabetes, uh, blood pressure and um, meat and saturated fats do um, uh, compound those those diseases and make them make them worse or uh, you know difficult to control. Um, so when we follow a plant based diet or part of a plant based diet, we have a lot of uh, you know different types of nutrients we, that we get from those foods, and also we can use plant based proteins to bulk up certain types of meals, so they cost us less at the end of the day as well. And we're all very cost conscious these mm. days with the price of food going through the roof. Let's look at the book to be used post Ramadan, not forgetting the issue around our samosas and our pies and our bhajas, etc. Have you actually touched on those food items in the book? Yes, Amina. Um, yes, so um, we actually have a little section. Um, on page five that gives you some tips of, of how to include savouries in a healthy way. So simple things like, you know, not starting off your meal with savouries, waiting uh, to have your savouries a bit later on. Um, I think that's something that's so important because traditionally we start off eating our savouries or starting off having our savouries. And that's when you tend to overeat on the savouries because that's, I think, your, your weakest point during the day. 
Um, so that's important. Um, we, we've also discussed about what to include in the filling of, of our savouries, and I think that's so important. It's such an important thing to include more vegetables, to reduce the oil content when preparing your fillings. Um, that can play such a big role. And the type of protein, like we spoke about, using more lean protein in the filling is, is important. Uh, so, so we have discussed ways that uh, your savouries can be included. Obviously, avoiding frying them and rather baking or air frying them if that's a possibility. So we have discussed this. We've also included some savoury alternatives. So on some days, we've inc included um, simple things like cutlets or uh, chicken squares and, you know, simple things like that. That could be a replacement. Which for, doesn't need deep frying. Doesn't need deep frying. That is more balanced, um, you know, a more balanced savory. So we've, we've also tried to accommodate for the savories because it's hard to tell people don't eat savories, you know. We rather educate them on how to adapt their savories, how to change it. Um, so we've gone with more of that approach and still have a delicious but a healthy alternative in Ramadan. We've come to wrap up time. Faiza, final words from you. Um, wow. Well, um, we would like the, your listeners or your viewers, yes. your viewers to um, get hold of the book if they possibly can, use the recipes, um, try and uh, you know, have a mindful Ramadan, take it slow with the eating, pace yourself at iftar, and make sure that your seri is is a filling, wholesome seri with a, a nourishing, um, balanced iftar. And of course, um, Eid is just around the corner. I wonder if you guys have applied your mind to the Eid festive table. What's that going to look like? But I guess that's for another time. And this book, as you have indicated to me, is uh, very versatile. You can use it post-Ramadan throughout your life, inshallah. Definitely, inshallah. Thank you so very much for being with us. Um, wonderful talking to you guys. And nice to see that people from the medical profession are applying their minds to give us a delicious yet a health Ramadan. Faiza Lahir and uh, Amina Dindar, shukran so very much for being on the show today. And that's it from us right here on Ramadan TV. A big thank you to the hardworking crew behind the scenes. Um, they always do an amazing job. Uh, till the next time, as always, thank you for watching. And we do hope you'll join us again tomorrow at the same time for another episode of Ramadan TV. Assalamu alaikum and khudafis.